But I really do think in the heart of hearts, that's what a lot of authors think. You know, I'm going to write this book. I'm going to write this great book. And the and because of it, the world is going to be the path to my door. And let me tell you something. It just doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. Hey, good to see everybody. Welcome to our uh, Publish Pro Profit BSPU call today. I'm pretty excited about this subject matter, even though maybe some of you might not be. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Certainly, if you're on watching, then I imagine there's some excitement about it. Uh, I want to talk about starting uh, with the end goal in mind. And, um, you know, I talk to a lot of authors and a lot of would-be authors, and I feel like this is like the biggest and most crucial mistake that most people that want to write a book make. And what I find is even many times wily veterans, you know, those who have written books in the past, continue to make this mistake. Or at the very least, they don't think long term. They don't think long term enough as to what the, the real goal is. Um, I think many authors, they don't want to maybe admit this, but I think many people that want to write a book really just think and believe that all they need to do is write the book and the world is going to beat a path to your door. I, I, I mean, I, I, I will say that to people and they know, I think in, in instinctually that, no, I shouldn't say that that's what I think, but I really do think in the heart of hearts, that's what a lot of authors think. You know, I'm going to write this book. I'm going to write this great book. And the, and because of it, the world is going to beat a path to my door. And let me tell you something, it just doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. For every 50 Shades of Grey, there are 5 million other books that are written that no one has ever heard of or knows anything about. And let me tell you something, even the most successful authors, whether nonfiction or fiction, they don't think that way. Uh, look at somebody like J.K. Rowling or, or Stephen King. They don't write one book and then expect that one book to magically transform their life and their career. You, you may say, well, J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter and it transformed her life. Harry Potter is volumes of content, volumes. I mean, she has written dozens of, of books on the subject matter. Stephen King, and, and let me say it this way, if you want to make money on a consistent basis, <laughs> which unless you're independently but wealthy, and you may be independently wealthy, then you don't need to make money on a consistent basis. And by consistent, I mean you know, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, but there's a paycheck coming in, money's coming in. If you want to make money on a consistent basis, then you need to have a goal in mind with your book. And if you're writing, let's say you're writing a fiction or you're writing nonfiction, and your only goal is to make royalties from your book, then you need to have volumes of content. I mean, Stephen King is certainly independently wealthy, but that dude continues to write books, right? He is continuing to write new stories, get them made into movies. You know, I mean, obviously he loves it and he's passionate about it, but he's continuing to make money. Now he could stop everything and I'm sure live on the royalties and the proceeds of what he's done in the past. And I'm sure he's got a fat bank account, but the reality is if he wants to continue making money every single week, every single month, every single year, he's got to produce new content. That is his model. That is his plan. You don't just write a book and the money flows. You don't just do it once and the money flows. You need to have a model and a plan that works in conjunction with your book. So starting with the end goal in mind means a few things. And I'm going to give you four questions that you need to ask yourself, four things that you need to be very, very specific about when it comes to your book, either what you've already written or what you plan on writing. Number one, and there are four things, as I said, and they all kind of flow together. And then I'm actually going to share with you uh, an example, uh, one of my client's examples um, of how this worked for, uh, for him and how this could potentially work for you. So number one, um, you need to ask yourself, what am I trying to sell with my book, all right? If you want your book to make you money, you need to ask yourself, what am I ultimately trying to sell? Now, if, I already gave you an example, if you're ultimately trying to sell books and you're going to make your living selling books, then you need to be like 
Stephen King. You need to be like J.K. Rowling. You need to be somebody that creates content continuously, right? Um, you can't, I mean, I, I, I'm communicating with a lot of authors recently uh, because of some uh, Facebook group stuff that I'm doing. I'll share more with you guys uh, on that in the future, but it's going crazy good. And um, some of you may have even snuck into that group. I don't know. But uh, there's so many people that have, are telling me, you know, how they've been writing this novel or this great work for years. And I'm like, first of all, if you're writing a novel or if you're writing a fiction and you're spending years on it, you're, you're making a crucial error for several reasons. Number one, you're putting all your eggs in the basket of one piece of content, one book. And let me tell you something, if it, if it won't work for Stephen King, and if that doesn't work for J.K. Rowling, then it's probably not going to work for you. You need to, if the only thing you're selling is your book, create volumes of content. So I gave you an example of that. What is it that you're trying to sell? Now, most of uh, my clients who are writing nonfiction books are writing books that have to do with their expertise, right? Like I did with Publish, Promote, Profit. So there's something else that we're selling. We're selling courses. Uh, we're selling consulting of some kind. Maybe we're selling done-for-you services. And so the book, the goal of the book is to get people to trust us, to raise our level of authority in their eyes, their level, their, how they see us as an expert in their eyes, so that they will buy the next thing from us, whatever that thing is that we're trying to sell. But you've got to, before you finish your book, ideally, and if you've already written your book and it's out, then you've got to go back and backtrack and make sure your book can do this for you. But you have to ask yourself, what ultimately am I trying to sell? And you need to know that first. Now, if you're just writing a book because it's your passion and you don't care, then fantastic. But that's not what most of my clients are paying me for. And that's what probably most of you are not thinking as you watch this video. You're thinking, I want my book to help raise my level of thought leadership, my level of expertise in the market, because I want to sell more of this. Courses, coaching, consulting, done for you services. You need to know, and it needs to be clear, this is what I'm trying to sell. That's number one. Number two, you need to ask yourself, how best can I use my book to reach that person? to buy my thing. How best can I use my book to reach that person? Now, there's a number of things that we talk about. As you know, as most of my clients come to me, they come to me because of paid advertising that we do. Social media is a massive opportunity to reach uh, the masses of people that might be interested in what you do. You can even be narrow in your marketing and advertising. You can obviously use speaking engagements. You can use PR and media. You can create your own media like a podcast or a blog, et cetera. But you need to ask yourself, how will I best reach the person that wants to buy this and ultimately is my ideal client that will buy my courses or buy my coaching or buy my consulting, et cetera? That's question number two. Question number three, what media can I use to speak to them? What media can be used to have a conversation with this individual? Now, you need to find a way to have a conversation with them uh, beyond just hoping that they're going to buy and find your book on Amazon. Does that happen? Sure. I was going through my Amazon results for the last six months, and this book has uh, made me a, just a, a hair under $6,000 in the last five and a half, six months in royalties. You know, I, I don't care as much about the six grand as I do about the hundreds of people that purchased the book for $24.95 that now are reading it or it's at least sitting on their desk, right? And there's a way for them to engage with me. So I'm excited about that. But beyond that, as you know, I have a business, right? I have employees. I have a family. I live in Southern California, which is expensive, right? So I need to proactively find a media or multimedia that I can use to communicate with my ideal client. You need to ask yourself that question. And then number four, how do I make the conversation with this person two-way, not one-way? And here's what I mean by that. When somebody buys your book on Amazon and they're reading it, that is a one-way conversation. They're reading your book. 
you don't even know that they're reading your book, right? You just, you don't know on Amazon, you don't know who bought the book. If they leave a review, then you can maybe see it's, you know, um, whatever, shorty pants, one, two, three, bought your book, et cetera, which is great. But how do you reach shorty pants? One, two, three, it's really hard to reach them. So that's a one-way conversation. We don't want a one-way conversation. We want a two-way conversation, right? So what is a two-way conversation? A two-way conversation is when they've joined your email list and you can email them and then they can respond to the email. A two-way conversation is when they've liked your page or when they've joined your your group, your Facebook group uh, around your thing, or maybe you have a connection with them on LinkedIn. Now you can have a two-way conversation. You can speak to them and they can speak back to you and you can take them down the path of potentially buying something from you that really is the end goal you had in mind to begin with, the courses, the coaching, the consulting, the done for you services, right? So those are the four questions. Let me go through them again and then I'm gonna give you an example. What are you trying to sell? How best to use your book to reach that person? What media can be used to speak to that person? And how do I make that conversation a two-way conversation, not a one-way conversation? So let me give you an example. I literally just picked one off my shelf 15 minutes ago, okay? Because I could give you an example of any of my clients, but I just picked one that I had that, you know, uh, we, we just moved to a new office. And so all my bookshelves were messed up. You know, I had somebody... I had my bookshelves just the way I want them. You know that I'm, I'm a little OCD. And then of course I didn't want to pack my books and then unpack my books. So I had somebody else do it. And now all my stuff is messed up. So I, I saw this book. I haven't seen it in a while. I'm like, cool, Ted Coleman, Great. A client that I had probably five years ago. So Ted wrote this book called the Nehemiah effect. Um, Ancient wisdom from the world's first agile projects. Now, Ted is an agile consultant to manufacturing firms. And you might tell by the title of his book that he's a spiritual person as well. Now, I, I actually tried to talk to Ted about the possibility of changing the main title of this because I didn't want this to, to, to just appeal to people that already have a spiritual slant. But he didn't want to do that. And of course, you know, we give our, our clients the license to make the final decision on the titles of their books and and et cetera. He didn't want to do that, but it still was very, very successful. So the first question that we had to ask was, okay, Ted, what are you really trying to sell? We're not really trying to sell this book. What are you really trying to sell? For Ted, what he was trying to sell is very, very high level consulting. As an agile consultant to manufacturing firms, he was getting paid as much as two to three thousand dollars per day for a visit. And most of the agreements that he would sign would be for 20, 30, uh, 50 days. So he would sign six figure agreements from one company to come in to go through their manufacturing process and help them to make their manner manufacturing process more efficient. So he wanted not just buyers of this book. He wanted people that were going to pay him six figures to come in for a short period of time and work his magic. Fantastic. He knows what he wants. We know what he wants. So the next question that he had to ask, was, okay, how best can I reach them? Now, that word best is actually uh, multifaceted. So best is not just a matter of where are those clients, because that's certainly a part of it. It's also how do you feel most comfortable and how are you most excited about reaching those clients? Well, for Ted, it was speaking engagements. So he wanted to use his book to get speaking engagements, to get on stages, use his book as a lead magnet afterwards and, and share his magic in 45 minutes or an hour and then have his booth set up and have people come to his booth to get a copy of his free book, which he gave in exchange for lead information and then follow up with those people and close deals. So Ted did this and during the launch of his book, Ted did over a quarter of a million dollars in real income because of his book, because of two speaking engagements that his book got him. So he knew, I want to use speaking. I'm good at speaking. This is how I do it. My book is going to get me more stages 
and my book is going to get me the lead from the stage. Because it's not just enough to, to speak and do a dazzling job. If you're speaking to 500 people, you don't want to just cross your fingers and hope they come up to you with money in their hands or credit cards. You want to instead give them something that will get them to take next steps with you. And offering a free copy of your book on the subject matter is a great way to make it a two-way conversation. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Number three, what media could be used to speak to them? Now, Ted had to use media to get to the people that were actually running the events, but also he wanted to get to the people that really specifically could hire him to do his magic for their manufacturing firms. So he used LinkedIn very efficiently. He also could have used direct mail, but chose not to use direct mail, but he used LinkedIn to connect with conference organizers as well as to connect with uh, corporate CEOs and, and those making the buying decision so that he could communicate. He still does that to this day, but those are two media that he's comfortable with using, likes to use to get on the stages to ultimately get the deal. And then fourth and finally, how do you make the conversation a two-way conversation the way he did it? And I already got ahead of myself and shared it, but at his speaking engagements, as well as on LinkedIn, he would offer a free copy of the book, which he would ship to them, right? That costs money, but he would ship it physically to them. And he'd offer a free copy of the book at his speaking engagements right there at his booth for their name, their telephone number, for them to answer a couple of questions, which would really help him determine if they're a great lead or not. So after he did his speaking engagement to 500 people, 50, 80, 100 come up to his booth. Hey, I really want to get a copy of that free book that you offered. Fantastic. Here's a, a, a simple questionnaire. I don't have enough books for everybody, so I'm going to mail it to you. Just fill out your name, your mail, your shipping address, as well as these few questions, and I'll get you the book. That's it. Now you have 50 to 80 of those 500 people that are raising their hands that are saying, hey, I am really interested, not just in this book, but ultimately I'm interested in what this book can do for me, which is that two-way conversation that Ted could then have and close deals. So one, two, three, four. You need to ask yourself these questions before you finish your book, or if your book is already done, you need to ask yourself these questions and say, does my book position itself properly to get me the things that I want and that I feel most comfortable with? Does it position me properly to get high ticket consulting gigs? Does it position me properly to get done for you services like we do at BSP? And then can I get this book or how can I get this book into the hands of the person that's going to be the decision maker, whether it's the decision maker because I want to speak an engagement or the decision maker that's actually going to write you a check and hire you for your corporate consulting. Then what media can be used? And obviously there are many opportunities with social media. And then what are you going to do to make this conversation two way? Because a one way conversation will not work. Yes. Yes. Occasionally it will happen. I published my book, Within the first 30 days, someone called me because they bought my book on Amazon. They read the book. I have all my contact information and, and various ways for people to connect with me in the book. They got in touch with us and they said, listen, I love what you're doing. It's exactly what I want. And they became a client, paid us $29,000 for us to help them. Hey, that happens and that's like magic, right? Beautiful. I loved it. But listen, I can't wait around for that to happen. I want it to be done proactively. That was a one-way conversation that happened to turn out for the good for me, but I want two-way conversations. As you know, that's why I have uh, a team of author development coaches that I set up for calls every single day, all because of using my book as the primary lead gen source to get people to raise their hands and say, hey, Rob, really interested in knowing more about what you do. So that's it. Four questions. You got to nail it. What are you trying to sell? How best to use it to reach the person that I can sell to? What media can be used to speak to them? And then how do I make this conversation a two-way conversation so that people can actually decide to buy my thing? There you go. That's it for today. I hope this is super helpful for you. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are because this is the magic. This is what makes the difference between somebody who is successful with their book and someone who is not successful with their book. Thanks so much. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Every week, we're posting tons more content to help you to publish, promote, and profit. So go ahead and subscribe now to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified whenever new content is available. And if you're interested in my latest book, Publish, Promote, Profit, just go to publishpromoteprofit.com.